Welcome to our online service today, the Sunday next before Lent. It's great that you can all join us. Today, being the second Sunday of February, is also Racial Justice Sunday. And of course, it's also Valentine's Day. So grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Praise God, for the Lord our God, the Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and be glad and give him, him the glory. Happy are those who have been invited to the wedding feast of the Lamb. Amen. Amen. Praise, Praise the Lord. The Lord. And so, let us declare our faith in Almighty God, who reveals himself to us as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We say together in faith. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And so, the special collect for today. Let us pray. Holy God, you know the disorder of our sinful lives. Set straight our crooked hearts and bend our wills to love your goodness and your glory. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves, we proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slave for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, let light shine out of the darkness, who has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Today marks the 26th anniversary of Racial Justice Sunday in Britain and Ireland. 
A lot of progress has been made over the years to reduce the incidence of racial injustice, but incidences like the killing of George Floyd in the United States last year remind us that a lot more has to be done to eradicate racial injustice in our modern world. Here in the UK, there is ample evidence of major racial injust inequalities in employment, housing, and the justice system. According to the British government's own statistics, ethnic minorities have twice the unemployment rate of their white British peers and are twice as likely to live in overcrowded housing. They are also much more likely to be stopped and searched by the police. And we can add the alarming ethnic difference in deaths from COVID-19. The previous Prime Minister was aware of these burning injustices and pledged to tackle them. As a church, we have our own dismal statistics, but the leaders are working hard to make the church more representative of its membership. In our Bible reading today, Paul reminds us that as Christians, we preach Christ as Lord. In the beginning of that chapter, Paul notes that we should not lose heart because of the many challenges that we face. Yes, it will be great for the Church of England to have more ethnic minorities in leadership, leadership positions, but we shouldn't give up because of the current situation. Rather, we should do all that we can to change the situation for the better. God didn't leave us to languish in our sins, but out of love for each one of us, male, female, young, old, gay, straight, white, black, or transgender. He sent his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, to take the form of a human being and to die on the cross for our sins. So no matter what we encounter in life, we can be hopeful because God who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of his glory displayed in the face of Christ Jesus our Lord. The biggest challenge that we face is in effectively tackling racial injustice is not one of ignorance or lack of education because most of us actually believe that God is loving and impartial. The main challenge with which we are daily confronted is our willingness to accept that irrespective of our differences, we are all made in God's image and equally loved by God, and to then consistently act in ways that reflect this. The law that caused God to act in such a breathtaking and amazing way by sending his son to become one of us should move us through the Holy Spirit to embrace everyone. Today being Valentine's Day is a good day to recommit ourselves to accepting and loving others just as God in Christ has accepted and loved us. When we do this, we would not only accept difference, but we will value it and see it as an integral part of our humanity. When we get to this point as a church, those who St. Paul says have been blinded by the God of this world, even they, would begin to see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ. And they also will become disciples of Christ and be transformed by the renewing of their minds to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God. God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. 
Let us then show our love for him by confessing our sins in penitence and faith. We keep a moment of silence. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly love mercy and walk humbly with you our god amen may the god of love bring us back to himself forgive us our sins and we are sure of his eternal love in jesus christ our lord amen. amen let us pray living god you call us to pray for our leaders, to remember those set over us. So we pray now for all those in positions of authority. We pray for those in our parliament, both government and opposition. In all their decisions, give them a proper sense of the responsibility entrusted to them and grant that they may work not for themselves, but for the good of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for leaders in the church, especially our leaders, Bishop James, Ronnie, our vicar, Daphne and Tim, our lay readers, and all those entrusted with positions of oversight and called to teach the faith through word and deed. Grant them vision and discernment, a living knowledge of your presence and a daily sense of your guidance. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Living God, we thank you that you are a God who hears and answers prayer and we praise you for those times when you have responded to us and granted our requests. But we confess there are times too when you seem silent, when listen though we might, we cannot hear your voice. And so we pray now for all who cry to you, but who feel their prayers are unanswered. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We think of those known to us facing difficult times, battling illness, wrestling with depression, anxious about the future, grieving for loved ones, those for whom life seems a puzzle, even a burden, and who long to find hope to make sense out of their confusion. We pray especially for the sick in our parish. John Hughes, Janet Rutherford, Len Evans and Charlie we give thanks for the continued recovery of Chris Dobson. We also pray for the sick elsewhere, and particularly we pray for the people of the West Midlands as they struggle with high rates of COVID. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember those who have died, especially John Doctor, whose funeral service will be held next Wednesday. We pray for friends and loved ones departed, known only to us. We rejoice with all your faithful people and pray you will make us to be numbered with your saints in that glory which is everlasting. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Now we gather up all our prayers in the words our Saviour taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. 
Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. God, the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side, and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.